have they which love your law, and nothing shall bother them. Wouldn't you like to have a a year where you wouldn't bothered by a bunch of stuff? You wouldn't worried about a bunch of stuff. That's right. You just get God's word out, and it says people who love His book, they can get rid of all those <coughs> things that bother them. Yes. And I encourage you, just pick a, a pick a book, uh, a chapter out of the Book of Psalms. It will uh, talk to you about how wonderful God is and how much He loves you. Pick a book, a chapter out of the book of Proverbs. It'll tell you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Go over to the book of John and read about how Jesus uh, lived and how simple His life was and how He didn't need a bunch of things. One to one time, uh, uh, some people He was talking to came up to Him and says, uh, we want to follow you, Jesus. We, we, man, you're, you're just the most popular guy in town. And, and more people, you know, we saw you feed those 5,000 people the other day. And, and man, and, and we hear you're going to set up a kingdom. Uh, we, want to, we want to be a part of you. And Jesus says, well, come follow me. He said, well, where do you live? He said, foxes have hoes in the ground that they can live in. And birds have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He, Jesus, even though he created the earth and... And uh, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and he owns all the hills. When he came to earth, he lived a life of simplicity, and he had nothing. He didn't even have any clothes at the end of his life because they, they gambled over his clothes while he was on the cross. <clears throat> As you enter this year, the end of this year, I want you to think about how you can live on less. Declutter your life. Of things, of problems, of hurts, of things that don't matter. Just start getting rid of those things. Don't add anything. Don't add one more thing to your life. I told somebody the other day, they said, can you do this? I said, no, I cannot do one more thing. There, I mean, there's no more space for me to do one more thing unless I do it from uh, 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 12... Uh, to 5 a.m. in the morning. I might can work something in there, but, but that's uh, not going to happen because that's my sleep time. Well, you may be thinking this year about and feeling bad that you can't give as much as you normally give at Christmas time. Don't worry about it. Right. Don't, don't let that be your emphasis this year. Sit down with your family. and We did this some, to some friends this week, uh, good friends of ours. We said, look, Let's don't give anything to each other this year. Let's let's just concentrate on on uh, uh, having uh, our presence with each other, not presence with gifts, but presence with our uh, physical selves, having spending a, a few minutes with each other. This year, I want you to think about giving more love to your family than you ever gave. Yes. You see. You can wrap up a box and give it to somebody and, then, and again it's gone in just a short time, the, the value of it. But if you love somebody and you show them that you love them, uh, that, that uh, precious gift will last forever. Yes. You can, this year you can live on less and have a more abundant life. If you will take inexpensive things and make gifts out of them. <clears throat> a baked good to somebody, to a nursing home or to each other. A handmade gift. An act of service. Somebody told me of a very neat thing that they did for somebody. And I thought this was, and this happened in this church family that's here today. The kids and the family members wanted to do something for uh, a person in their family. And they knew that they were having a difficult time uh, in, in, in their life. So they all got together and they went over to that person's house and they just cleaned their whole house. They just went from one end of it to the other cleaning their house. And when that person came home from work, they saw a wonderful, wonderful gift. Amen. What a gift of love that yes. will never be forgotten. Oh, the house will get dirty again, I'm sure. <laughs> they got grandkids that come in there and but the, but the gift, the gift will never go, or never be forgotten, yes. never go away. Right. This year, <clears throat> you can 
take some scrap paper, or you can take some other paper that you have, and you can write notes of kindness and, and thanks, thanksgiving to people that have meant something to you. You can help an elderly person or a senior citizen that is not able to do a, something around their home. You can go to that person's house and you can do something to minister to them in fixing, repairing, or helping somebody this year. You can take some medicine or food to somebody that cannot afford to get their medicine or cannot afford to get the groceries that they need. You can help a child <clears throat> by sitting down with them, turning the TV off, turning the sports programs off, reduce some of the activities of where you have to leave the house as soon as you get from work, sit down with your children, and do some one-on-one -on -one time with them. Amen. Help them in their tutoring. We, we had a, a, a Melita and her, her fine children uh, have been offering tutoring at our church on Saturdays. Uh, but you know what? The best tutor in your in the world is you as a mom or you as a dad yes. sitting down and just spending some time with your children. You can also use that energy and time to help other organizations and other people. You don't have to wait till Christmas Day to have Christmas. You can have Christmas 365 days a year. You can pick what day Christmas is going to be on. That's right. Isn't that a great thing? That's right. I, I'm not, you, know, you don't have to worry. What, wait till December the 24th, uh, Christmas Eve, or December the 25th, Christmas Day, to give and receive love to other people. You can do it anytime you want to. In fact, it would be great for you to, to think about Christmas more than one time a year. You can visit a nursing home. You can have prayer with somebody. You can go by the hospital. You can go to the burn center. You can do. There's many things that you can do. Many of you uh, uh, volunteered to make uh, cakes and stuff to to help raise money uh, for the children that won't have Christmas this year. That's a way of demonstrating love and, yes. and uh, living a life of abundance. Because you see, the thing about this is. You may think you're doing something, but Jesus has already promised, give and it shall be given unto you. Yes. Amen. If you want more love, you give more love. If you want more kindness, you give more kindness. You can't go around with the attitude, well, nobody's doing anything for me, so I'm not going to do anything for anybody else. It don't, that's not the way it works in the spiritual <clears throat> realm. You say, I don't care if anybody does anything for me, I'm going to give my life in ministering and helping other people. Amen. One of the keys of happiness, again, is not to dwell on what you don't have, but to dwell on what you do have. And most of you are rich, and many of you have demonstrated your richness by loving others and giving to others. Today, I want you to begin a life of abundance. Amen. Unless... Don't wait until you get that promotion. Don't wait until you graduate. Don't wait until you retire. Don't wait until everything is just right because it never will, everything never will be just right. But start today to live a life of abundance on less things. Let us pray. Father,